So today I'll be talking about expressions of glory. Expressions of glory. In the Old Testament, one of the primary signs that the Lord had given the his people from the patriarchs down to Moses. In order to know that he is present in any situation, is the manifest presence of his glory. Because it is quite difficult for any man to see God as he truly is on the throne. So God usually speaks to mankind in symbolisms, sometimes animate symbolisms. When he was speaking with Abraham, it was God, but he wore the form of a man. Of course, God is not man, <laughs> but he wore the form of a man. Genesis chapter 18, when they came into the, to the, uh, the Oak of Mamre, when they came, the three of them, and they visited Abraham, you will see that the form he took that day was different from the form he took when he spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, was also different from the form he took when he spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. But Abraham always knew that he was talking to the same God, even though he would speak to him in different forms. So in Genesis 12, the voice of the Lord came to Abraham. So Abraham did not see God face to face. The voice of the Lord came to him and he said to him, leave your father's house, leave your mother's house, to a land I will show you. So he saw, basically he saw a vision and decided to have God to follow this vision. So God did not appear to him physically. Then in Genesis 15, God said, okay, let's make a covenant. Uh, bring Haifa, bring this, bring that. And then meet me here, we'll do a covenant. And then he met Abraham there, and Abraham waited. The Bible said he waited and waited and waited, and expecting God to appear. But God did not appear until Abraham slept off. By the time Abraham woke up, the covenant was being done. And this time, Abraham saw a lantern and a stove. He saw, but the sun was different. The sun was different. Then you come to Genesis chapter 18. Then three men were walking by. Abraham saw them. These are three strangers, according to scriptures. Abraham said the servant, bring them, bring them. And Abraham quickly prepared food and he, he kept their company. Uh, it was hospitable to them. And then he discovered in the course of their conversation when the when one of the men said to Sarah that by this time they said you are going to have a child. Then he don't know that uh, ordinary people don't speak like this. But now you guys don't talk like this. Why is a stranger talking about my wife having a baby? And then it dawned on him that, oh my God, I'm speaking to God. But again, not in the same form. Then we come to the days of Moses, and then we saw God in another form. In this form, there was a burning bush. Abraham never saw one burning bush in his life. So Abraham, Abraham was not introduced to God in that form. Moses saw a burning bush, turned aside. God, it is the holy ground. But Abraham never got this, the holy ground once for God. The expression was different. He was talking to Abraham. It was so different when he was talking to Moses. And then they will tell Moses that, oh, I know your father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, had a relationship with them, but I did not introduce myself to them in this form. But for, for you, I'm introducing myself in this form. And then I would say, so, um, I have that I have now. It wasn't as if it changed the form, the approach changed. And then for the first time, God will appoint a man as God. God told you, uh, Moses, I'm going to make you a God of the Pharaoh. God has never done that before. He was a friend to Abraham. Now the form he took care was more of that of a, a master to an apprentice. Moses began to learn the way of the Lord, but the relationship was not friendship anymore. 
and the form has changed. I can go on and on. By the time it would appear to Joshua, it was a lot of form. Even though Joshua's name and saw him in certain of the forms he used to appear to Moses, and the children of Israel saw the cloud of glory, they saw the pillar of fire. But by the time they got to the promised land, another form. There was no more cloud of glory, there was no more pillar of fire. In fact, he, Joshua was led to the promised land with the spirit of wisdom. Another form of the same. The dynamism of the way of God is the unique thing that the believer must learn. Expecting God to show up the way he showed up yesterday, two days ago, three days ago. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you are expecting yourself. <laughs> Maybe you are expecting yourself. Maybe you had assumed that you know all of him. Because in reality, Many of us know that after we have received the Holy Ghost, the dynamism, the way it began to work with us was not one way. Today you are sleeping, you are just in a vision. Tomorrow you are driving the still small voice. Next tomorrow you are listening to a worship song, the song hitting in the chest, as if the word of God is pouring out of the song to you. Another time you are reading the scriptures, every part of your body is on fire. Another time you just lie down and you are you're having a conversation with a friend. And in that conversation, you begin to hear his voice. Another time you are in church, pastor is preaching. Wow, you begin to hear his voice. And it's not true, the pastor. It is his voice to you. You begin to then learn that the expressions of glory are dynamic. And you must learn to be sensitive enough to know when the Lord is speaking to you. You must know it. You must learn how to yield yourself to it. For the Holy Ghost always, always, always identifies, identifies in our hearts for us the voice of the Father. For those who are sensitive, you will know when God is speaking to you. You will know it. In fact, you might sit down and be listening to the news. I remember a very popular woman that many of us know. Uh, she, she was the first person of first bank. I remember when she said that she was restless, but did something in, in, in sciences, that she didn't feel at home. Then she studied accounting, she didn't feel at home. She said she was just restless. This is not what I want. This is not what I want. She knew all the things she didn't want, but she didn't know what she wanted. And eventually she got a job with some Lebanese company as a receptionist, and those guys were making chairs. And she said as soon as she walked into their office, sat at her reception desk and began to see how they are organizing and coordinating their businesses, she knew what she wanted. That was the business that she that I have to be longing for all along. Well, she didn't see a vision. She didn't hear a still small voice. She just knew every time she tasted of a different uh, thing, she would know this is not what I want. You know, when when somebody would say, when I when I when I see what I, what I need, I will know it. Now I don't know it, but when I I have a feeling that when I see, I'm going to know it. And then she went into business and she began to do well. And she was importing chairs, importing all the material from abroad. And she was supplying it to companies and she was making money. And then the government decided that they wanted to empower local producers in the country. And that they were going to ban importation of chairs. And she knew. You know, like six months before the policy would come out. She was asleep praying, and the word of God came to her and said to her, build a workshop. Get guys that will begin to build the furniture right here in Nigeria. And she was like, why? It's cheaper to import. How do you have established relationship with people that are 
supplying these materials, and then these artisans in Nigeria are not very reliable. Many of them will form it. Many of them will not use the use of standard material. How do I get money to start my own factory? How do I get money to buy the equipment? How do I get money to train the staff? All these questions came to her heart. But when she woke up the next morning, immediately she went to church Sunday morning. She met a man. The man had three daughters. She was one of seven. And the man said, now, how are you doing? And she said, oh, the Lord has said it on my heart to start my own factory, but I don't have the cash. And the man said, go to any bank, any bank. Find out if they can give you a loan. I will be your guarantor. Wow. Then she went to a bank. The bank said, oh, these are the terms. The man came to the bank and deposited the same amount of money she wanted as a loan in the bank. Said, oh, guys, give out the loan. I'm depositing this amount of money. This is the assurance that she will pay you back. She will pay you back with interest. But the man was careful not to give out the money so that she wouldn't squander it. So the transaction went through the bank, but the money came out of the man's pocket. And on the very day they would implement the policy, they had finished the factory, they had a factory full of goods, and people are working. They said she was still already cash in her pocket because she had paid off her loan, but she was ready for the next stage of her business. <laughs> That's when you know that all the Lord spoke to her at the beginning as she was maturing, changed. At the beginning, all she knew was what she didn't want. But when it came to the time when she needed divine guidance, she wasn't saying, oh, if I don't like this again, then I will feel it in my body. No, she heard, she knew this was the policy that could ruin her business and she was way ahead of it. Expressions of glory. How the Lord speaks to you and I over time will change. Be sensitive. The more you grow, and then I know there are some of us that are remaining in one spot and not are not going for a long time. Uh, those ones who will have a lot of work to do. But the more you grow, the more you come to rely on the on the nature and manner in which the Holy Spirit talks to you. There are things that before, you would just say, oh, Lord, I want this. And then the Lord will give to you. And then at the point, you will not be thinking. And then the Lord will give them to you. And then at the point, you will not even know you need that thing. And then it will come a day or two before you would actually need it. And you will be wondering, how come God knew I was going to need this thing? And then he sent this, and then he sent that. And then when this thing came together, it was so, it was so, so together. And then you begin to realize that not only is he growing with you as you are growing in him, he is helping you to tailor your mannerism and mindset to him so that in all of his dealings, in all of his doings, you and him are in step. Expressions of glory. But the ultimate expression of glory in the New Testament. It's you. The ultimate expression of God's glory in the New Testament church is you. Many of us forget that the one reason why God sent Jesus to this world and why Jesus gave his life for us is so that we can become as he is. Meaning, that we are not meant to sit wearing beautiful clothes, fancy clothes, ah, looking at each other in the mirror or face to face and counting blessings and smiling to the bank and telling ourselves, oh, the Lord loves me, the Lord loves me. Well, what he wants us to do is to go to the places where glory had never been seen before and express glory there. Not among ourselves, as we usually like to do. Many of us forget that the essence of glory is so that it can cover the earth and subdue darkness. 
oh, it is good for glories to come together, to have like a church service, to hug each other, to share good examples and good deeds, to talk about the goodness of God, to sing together, to worship together. Oh, beautiful. But that is not the end. And nobody lights a candle and puts it under a bushel. And it is not good for light to come together in a place that's already lit up. Darkness needs the light more than light needs the light. The reason many of our prayers, or many of us who struggle in the place of prayer or in the place of expression of the Holy Spirit is simply because we forget that if we do not go where the darkness is, the intensity of our light will begin to dim. When you have a church where there are five prophets, four apostles, that indicates in one church, this Sunday, they will begin to fight for administration spots. None of you remember, or you will still be going through it now. You are attending a church, you are a minister, and you know that you have to be in church before seven. You have to attend the minister's meeting. You have to attend minister's prayer meeting before you can have 15 minutes on the altar. So it becomes a competition among ourselves. I don't really start in four Sundays. Ah, I must wake up very early tomorrow. I must do the one in the church first. So that you use this to, to, to mention your fervency. You didn't know that glory is fading. You didn't you wouldn't know. If, if, before you know it, it will come, it will become so, so mundane, lacking spiritual fervor or power, that it is just done to satisfy yourself to mark calendar and to satisfy your pastor. And then there. It is in the dark that the stars, the stars shine brightest. It's one of, uh, one of Nigerian musicians to um, lyrics that I love. He said, what is the point of being a star when there is no darkness? Mm. But the star, the darkness, brightens, brings, gives the star a visibility. You must not only shine in the church. Your glory must be expressed. His glory in your life must be expressed at the right places, where it is needed. Your light, let your light so shine that the world may see. We know that the church may see. It is good. The church will see. But it is not important that the world will see. If you would take his glory to the right place and shine it there, then you would attract the blessings from those places and the satisfaction in the heart of God that are there in his will. And there is nothing that can beat that for you as a believer. Believe me. It's not uh, every day that I get messages from ministers of the gospel who are attending the same church and uh, already uh, getting to a point where they're having a field over somebody is uh, somebody is playing uh, pastor's favorite. Somebody is whispering in the ears of pastor. Somebody is calling pastor's favor. Somebody is doing this. And, and uh, uh, you, you are in the car and uh, you, you, you want the position. You are in the ocean. You want the, and everybody, and it seems as if you have localized yourself so that the same type of people are every day clapping for you. <laughs> so you, are, you want to sing. And then everybody will clap, ah, they will say, oh, sister, sister. And then next Sunday, the same crowd, sister, sister. And then, and then you do this with your sanity. Oh, my. You must see beyond the walls of the church. It is important for your light to shine in darkness. It is important that that blood that's going to you in the church that you have as a gift 
that you use it to draw men, to draw women from darkness into light. It is very essential. A lot of us do not understand. Fire consumes itself. We don't know. If you start a fire with some materials, after some time, it will burn out to the materials you started it with. If you use gas, gas will finish. If you use wood, wood will finish. No matter what you use to start a fire, it will finish. If you want the fire to continue to burn, you must add more materials to sustain the fire so that it continues to burn. If you are burning among yourself within the fellowship alone, everybody is calling you, oh, superstar, oh, prayer machine, oh, this, it very soon. You will burn out. You will burn out. And then people begin to talk about losing their faith. We begin to talk about backsliding. We begin to talk about, oh, my prayer is not answered anymore. We begin to talk about uh, getting bored. Everything is getting like uh, a routine. Why? They didn't add new things to their faith. And the scriptures told us the things to add. And the, in order to add these things to your faith so that your faith continues to burn, you must have unique new experiences. Look at the life of Jesus. Today is with this one at uh, raising the dead here. Tomorrow is uh, a healing the sick there. Next tomorrow, practically every other day, everywhere Jesus goes to, he has new experiences, has new new words, has new messages. That is how glory shines. If he wanted an audience of twelve only, he could have twelve with kept his twelve disciples and be talking to them day and night. But where is the dynamism in that? Listen to one man every day for, for four years. You, you, are you not going to be tired? Our attention span, do you think it, it can take that much? You must learn now that in order for you to continue to grow in the faith so that you don't stall and then become a local champion, so that you don't, if your glory is not limited in any way, you have to continue the progressive journey of your Christian faith, taking that light into the places where it is needed. Apostle Paul showed so bright because he didn't stay in one spot. He didn't stay. James was the head of the church in Jerusalem, stayed in one spot. Every time you read James, you'll be wondering if you really knew the Lord. For some part of his writings, he spoke as if he knew the Lord. Some other part, Look as if he had no understanding of the gospel. But look at Apostle Paul. Look at the consistency. He will preach the same message. But he will preach it in Beria. Then he will preach it in Macedonia. Then he will preach it in Lycia. Then he will preach the same message in Ephesus. Then he will preach the same message in Malta. It was the same message. Which, but they lost to meet different people's needs. And the glory of God continued to shine in those places. Do you understand now why his light seemed to shine harder and brighter than the light of others? Glory must be on the move. The expressions of glory must be on the move. And then from all those nations, you draw, you draw the same message. Christ is our message. But I know what he said. But you see, James was preaching Christ only in Jerusalem. And Apostle Paul was preaching him all over the world. And at the end of their life, you will see which ones, which glory showed better or brighter. Why is it that Apostle Paul continued, the, even when he was in prison, and they wanted to attend to his churches that he, 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 that he founded, Look how to go back to him, to say to him, why them let us? Even though you are in prison now, they will listen to you. Apostle Paul in his letter had to write that, some of you said that the weight of his letter is stronger than the very man. I'm coming. When I come, come and say it to my face. You, hey, you have to understand the level of the authority that he commanded to be able to say that to the church. I'm teaching this one in you know, the expressions of glory. It's not within the church that your competition is. In the church, you grow. Jesus grew in synagogue. Oh, by the age of 12, he had mastered the ways of men. He had mastered the Torah and the Nakib. He was a made man. By age 30, he was taking the glory all over Israel. All over the locations where you could find the children of faith. 
And the same time is expected of you. Rather than get involved in church politics, always looking at you to gossip about the church, diminishing your own value because you have the energy, but you are expending it in the wrong place. You are fire that is burning itself out rather than finding new materials to shine the lights to. You are on the same spot, shining the light in the same spot, and at the end of the day, you burn out. So that's what fire does. Unless you add new materials to it, you have to understand the expression of glory. You have to listen to me with your spiritual ears, and you have to begin to express that glory today. New experiences help to expand the horizons of your faith. Not only that, they are nothing you use in Lagos, and they are nothing you use in Abuja, and they are nothing you will use in Canada, and the one you will use in London, and the one you will use in whatever. You will notice that after, after you've done so much, you will notice that the expressions of God through you changes. You, you go to this place to minister, you begin to prophesy. But you've never prophesied before. But in that church, they needed to prophesy at that time. The Spirit of God prophesies through you. Then you go to another ministry. Then somebody is speaking in tongues and you're interpreting. But you've never interpreted before. Another expression of glory from you. Because we are facing a new audience. And this is what the Lord wants to use here. Then you go to this place where are healing the sick. But you've never done that before. And then you realize, oh, they need some. And then you go to this place, you hold back before you began to teach. And you wonder, oh my God, see what I taught. I've never taught this before. The expression of glory in you again. But that is the need of that church at that time. And you are the one that the Holy Spirit is upon to do that at that time. But if it's your local church, this Sunday they give you 15 minutes to do prayer. Next Sunday they give you 15 minutes to do prayer. The following Sunday they say, come and collect coffee. The following Sunday they say, hey, come and do uh, announcement. That's all your ministration. And you are coming home and everybody, the same set of people are clapping for you. Oh, come on. If that is not glory express. That is performance. By just performing to the gallery, singing to the choir. And yet you are as anointed and as, as given auction as though that you go on social media and start a video and teach and today professor and next tomorrow and they will do it consistently until their name is known and they are solving problems and people are sharing testimony. You are equally as anointed as them, but you are forgotten that your the glory that is upon you is global. You have thrown your glory to a local assembly glory. <laughs> oh my, think on this thing. There are 8 billion people in the world. You have a portion of them that you have to deliver to God at the end of your journey. You are not going to be rated at how well you impressed Paradenga in a local assembly. What God has called you to do is bring the world into the light. As we go to our churches today, I declare that I'm expressing glory freely. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the expression of glory in your life will not diminish or dim, that men are attracted to the light that you carry. Women are attracted to the light that you carry. Children are attracted to it. They speak attracted to it. Those who are afflicted are attracted to it. They come to you, and as you minister to them, glory, glory, the glory of God comes upon them, and they begin to experience their miracles. I declare that you will not be small. You will not be little. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the mighty deeds of God in your life will find expression. You will not be stifled. I declare you will not limit your own self. You will not reduce yourself to a competitor among your brethren. No, you are going to take this light and you are going to set the world on fire with it. Thank you, Father, for it is established. Glory be to your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout glory. 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 Glory.